This is the iPhone 17 Pro, and here I've got the iPhone 16 Pro. And I've traveled out here to some of the darkest skies in the US to answer the question you've all been asking me. Just how good is the iPhone 17 at photographing the night sky? Last time I gave the 16 Pro a try at photographing the Milky Way, and I was pleasantly surprised by the results of the 1X lens, the main camera. But when I switched over to the ultra wide lens, it was terrible. And the telephoto lens, it was okay, but it wasn't anything mind blowing or game changing. But the iPhone 17 Pro has had some changes made to it. So I wanted to see if those changes make any difference when photographing the Milky Way, especially when comparing it to the iPhone 16 Pro results. I also wanted to give the 17 Pro's new and improved telephoto lens a try at photographing deep space objects. Because last time I did it with the 16 Pro, I was able to capture them, but they didn't look that great. Now, before I get into it, let me tell you how I'm photographing the Milky Way so you can do it too. The first thing you're gonna need is your phone, obviously. But in addition to your phone, you're gonna want a tripod and a phone holder for that tripod. Now, this one I got online, it was pretty inexpensive. It's not the best in the world, but it gets the job done. And when it comes to the phone holder, you wanna make sure it has the ability to point up because you know, we're photographing the stars. And that's pretty much all you need when it comes to equipment. But there is one other thing that's really important you need to know. You see, in order to photograph the Milky Way, you have to be in a place that allows you to do that. And we call that a dark sky location. Basically a place that's super far away from city lights. For example, I'm here in the deserts of Utah where there's no major city for literally hundreds of miles around me. If you're looking for a dark sky site near you, I'll talk about that later. All right, well, I'm gonna wait till it gets dark and then I'm gonna show you how to photograph the Milky Way and then we'll take a look at the results and compare them to the iPhone 16 Pro. It's thanks to these wildlands that I can even try to capture the Milky Way with my iPhone. But recently I've been flooded with headlines saying that these lands are being taken away from us. To get a real understanding of what's going on, I use Ground News, today's sponsor. In fact, I've been a user of Ground News before they even sponsored this video. It's my go-to app when it comes to finding sources for covering a news story from every angle, showing you any political leaning they have. That way you can read about the same issue from different perspectives so you can separate facts from emotional appeal and politics. For example, the current administration removed a rule that prevented road development on millions of acres of national forest land. You can see how many news sources covered it and their political leaning. Right-leaning outlets talked about the economic benefits of this decision, while left-leaning outlets say it damages environmental protections and it will cause an increase in forest fires. Using ground news helps me get a deeper understanding of an issue so I can draw my own informed conclusion. And you can do that too by scanning this QR code here or going to ground.news slash Ian Astro to save 40% off unlimited access to their vantage plan, which is the one that I use. Now let's get back out to the wilderness and see how this phone does at photographing the stars. All right, so I'm all set up here, got my phone. There's the beautiful Milky Way. So let me show you how to take photos of the Milky Way with the phone. So you're gonna open up your camera and in the top right, you're gonna see that there's a little night mode option. And we're gonna go ahead and turn that on. So I'm gonna click those eight dots. I'm gonna turn night mode on and I'm gonna make sure that it's at the maximum exposure by tapping it. It'll say 10, but it'll realize it's on a tripod and jump up to 30. And you can only do that when you're on a tripod. All right, so now this can do 30 second exposures instead of 10 seconds. So I can go ahead and do that and I'll confirm looking at the top right of the screen. There's the little night mode icon. So I'm gonna take the exposure and let's see how the 1X lens does for Milky Way photography. Boop. All right, let her rip. Milky Way, Milky Way, Milky Way. Oh, I'm excited to see what this looks like. Okay, here we go. First results. Let's see how it looks. Ah, that looks pretty awesome. I'm actually really happy with this result. The Milky Way details look great, bright stars stand out. Plus you can see different areas of the Milky Way, like the dark horse. But how does it compare to the previous iPhone, the 16 Pro? Looking at the two side by side, there's some notable differences. First, the iPhone 17 result looks much brighter than the 16, but the 16 does have a bit more contrast between the light and dark regions. But the biggest difference I see is the image quality. The iPhone 17 shot looks softer and feels more natural, where the 16's result looks busy and noisy, like the texture has been overemphasized, giving it a crunchy feel to it. 
Zooming in, the background on the 17 Pro shot looks really clean, where the 16 Pro has lots of noise. There's also lots of processing artifacts in the 16 Pro result, but what makes things really interesting is that these two phones use the same camera sensor. So why are the results different? Well, I don't want to get too into the weeds with technical details since most people, like myself, really just care about the results but I'll briefly touch on the differences that make the results seem so different. When you take a photo with your phone, the phone's processor converts that raw data into the photo you see on your screen. The iPhone 16 Pro uses Apple's A18 chip, but the iPhone 17 Pro uses their latest processor, the A19 chip. The A19 processes photos differently than the A18 using upgraded image processing techniques. My guess is that this has improved things like noise reduction and detail recovery, which is why there's such a stark difference despite each camera using the same sensor. In addition to the core of the Milky Way, I used the iPhone 17 Pro to photograph the Milky Way's Cygnus region, and the image turned out really nice. A good balance of color and detail. Okay, now I'm gonna give the ultra wide lens a try. Let's see how that does for Milky Way photography. So, boop, 0.5 lens, make sure it's at 30 seconds and Great, here we go. Let's see how this ultra wide lens does. Okay, here we go. Well, the ultra wide is still disappointing. It doesn't look that great. Comparing the 17 Pro's results to the 16 Pro, they both are just bad. There's not much else to say. This field of view is supposed to be the equivalent of a 13 millimeter lens on a camera, which would look like this shot I took with my Nikon Z5 II. So not a good result with the ultra wide lens, but the next test is the one I'm most looking forward to. All right, let's try out the zoom lens and see what that looks like. All right, gonna have to focus here. Wow, it's really struggling to focus. I was having a hard time getting the telephoto lens to focus on the stars. After about a minute or so of trying to figure out how to focus with this lens, I finally got a result. Looking at the two side by side, the first things to note is the different fields of view. The iPhone 17 Pro's improved zoom lens is a 4x zoom, where the 16 Pro uses a 5x zoom. The 17 Pro also has a larger sensor, allowing for more light collecting power. This is probably why I'm noticing such a significant difference between the two in the contrast. Also, as a bonus, you can just start to see the Lagoon and Trifid Nebula in here, a beautiful pair of deep space objects. Here's a closer photo I took with my telescope and astronomy camera. Speaking of deep space objects, I wanted to give this phone a try at photographing some, but first, I wanted to talk about these so-called 48 megapixel cameras on the iPhones. So these cameras are always boasting about these larger resolutions. The iPhone's main camera is 48 megapixels, and now the 17 Pro's new zoom lens is also 48 megapixels. But these phones don't shoot at 48 megapixels by default. They actually shoot at 24 megapixels. That's because it uses a process called pixel binning, which basically means it combines a group of four tiny pixels into one big pixel. This helps downscale the image, which saves on memory, but it also does something else. It makes the sensor more sensitive to light, which is especially useful when you're photographing something dark like the Milky Way. In fact, a lot of astrophotographers use pixel binning in their astro cameras to help improve their images on really faint targets. But during these tests, I kept it at the default 24 megapixels, not just because it handles low light better, but because most people aren't gonna process their photos afterwards. They just want a great result straight out of the camera, and that's what I wanted to test. So with that in mind, let's see what this phone can do when going after some deep space targets. First up, I used the main 1X camera to get a wide image of the Andromeda galaxy. It did a decent job at getting it, and you can see the fainter region of the Milky Way to the left. But let's get a closer look with the 4X lens. With the zoom lens, I can just start to see those fainter dust lanes of the galaxy but overall the photo looks pretty messy. However, it does look better when compared to the shot I took using the 5X lens on the iPhone 16 Pro. With the 8X zoom, it really struggles to get a good result, and the internal post-processing that the phone does makes the stars look really strange. Now I'm gonna do something a little wild. I'm gonna go after the Andromeda galaxy with the maximum zoom, so let's see how that looks. After finding the Andromeda galaxy, I zoomed in all the way at 40X, and after some focus struggles, I managed to get this result. Yeah, not good. But then again, I wasn't expecting much. After that, I tried zooming out a bit using a 17.5x zoom, and again, the result was not great. But one redeeming factor is the fact that I'm actually photographing a galaxy 
two and a half million light years away with a camera in my pocket. Pretty mind blowing if you ask me. Next up, I went after my favorite night sky object, the Pleiades Star Cluster, a group of stars so famous that ancient cultures all around the world told stories about them. And of course, I struggled to get the camera properly focused on it, but eventually I did and the results were decent. Comparing this to the iPhone 16 Pro result, the 17 had a better, cleaner image, and it actually did an okay job at bringing out the signature blue color of this star cluster. Now, if you want to photograph the Milky Way with your phone, you'll need to find dark skies near you. You can use online resources like light pollution maps to help you out. If you want a guide on how to use these maps to find a spot near you, I've got a detailed guide for free on my Patreon. I'll leave a link in the description. If you enjoyed this video and want more space and astronomy content, check out my other videos.